everything that the priests did was according to the word and meant to be to the worship and glory of God. Amen. The ministering of the word is worship. Yeah. We don't stop worshiping. Let that same anointing continue to flow. Keep lifting your hands. Shout to his glory and praise him as we worship. Amen. Yes, give him glory. Hallelujah. Amen. There's some awesome and amazing things that God is loosing in these days. Amen. We are heading into a time like never before. We are coming into a place in the kingdom that no one has gone before. We are at that place. And the cloud of witnesses gathered around. Shouting and praising as new souls are at it. As the dark gets darker. The light gets stronger. Give him glory in the house. Amen. He's coming to do what he said he was going to do. He accomplished what he came for. He's coming back to finish. Amen. Hallelujah. And in that meantime, from when he left till he comes back, it's all the last day. In that time, he set us to accomplish the work. Amen? Think about it. Let's think about it. Amen? Jesus continually talked about the work that he'd been sent to do, the work of his Father. Amen? The work of the kingdom. Not works, though, but our work. Amen? We talk about the kingdom. We talk about being redeemed from the world and established in the kingdom. If you are a good soldier, you've been through boot camp, your A schools and all the different names the different services have for their schools and their preparations to get you ready for your job. Amen. It's to do something. It's to live a certain way. It's to be committed to a cause. Amen. Everything Jesus did was about the kingdom. Amen. He was the king. He is the king. Will always be the king. Amen. Amen. His kingdom has always been established, will always be. But some things are getting ready to happen. We're going to be going a variety of places. I'm going to start in Matthew 24. A good part of what we'll be doing, though, will be in Hebrews. Specifically, Hebrews 9 will be in Isaiah 61. But we're going to start in Matthew 24. We have been talking about salvation. We've been talking about the kingdom. We've been talking about the new birth. We've been talking about the new life. And we've been talking about what's getting ready to happen. The things that are coming, the things that Jesus said about who he was, what the kingdom is, and what the end result is going to be that we have in this word. Amen. That he rose up from the grave and carried back to heaven. Amen. Sent his spirit to dwell in us and said, 
the angels told the apostles as they watched him ascend, this same Jesus that you see going up is going to come in like manner. Amen? Amen. Oh, that's amen. Amen? It says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. And if you'll go with me to Matthew 26. And in Matthew 26, verse 27 and 28, he said, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Amen? Now we'll go to Hebrews 9. Remember so far we're talking about the gospel and the covenant. Hebrews chapter 9 says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. This was the outer area. And after the second veil, as you move from the courts into the holy areas, there was a second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, the holy of holies, which had the golden censer and the ark of the government overlaid around about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But in the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood. In other words, he took blood in there with him, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in the meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things that were good things, in other words, it's a gospel, it's a good message, it's, it's a, uh, the, the gospel itself, the priest of the gospel, the priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Let's give him glory. Amen. Let's say amen. Yeah. Once and for all. Amen. By the old covenant, by the old way they had ordinances and rituals they had to sacrifice innocent blood for their sins but by the new covenant by the better covenant jesus the lamb of god once and for all obtained that complete forgiveness for us amen for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh in other words if all that worked how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God how much better will that purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God amen and for this cause he's the mediator of the new testament 
that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which were called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Amen. Let's give him glory now. Amen. Hallelujah. He died for all our sins. He died for all their sins. For the sins of the world, he accomplished it all. Amen. He established that covenant. Amen. Let's go to let's go to Luke 4. In Luke chapter 4, 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year to the Lord. And he's quoting from Isaiah 61 there, and he stopped at that point, and he closed the book, and he gave it to the minister and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue, were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Amen. Let's praise him in the house. Amen. And we'll see at the close of that caption, at that chapter, he says in verse 43, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for there am I sent. Now we'll go to Isaiah. And this is the verse that Jesus was quoting there. And he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings. Amen. Unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's where he stopped because that's what he was doing in that particular time, in his incarnation there. Amen. You can draw a line there if you want because what comes after that is what he's getting ready to do when he comes back. Amen. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Amen. He is coming back. Amen. In his kingship, in his fullness, in his glory. Amen. He was the Lamb of God, but he's also the King of kings. Amen. Getting ready to come back and to establish his kingdom. Amen. That we are here to be proclaiming. He is proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. He is proclaiming the good news of the reign of Yahweh. He is proclaiming the superiority and the reality that there's one God, one truth, one way to salvation. Amen. And he's the most high God. Let's give him glory in the house. Amen. And it says in the word of God, it goes on, it says, to employ it unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord that he might be glorified. And they shall build old wastes. They shall raise up former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities, the generations, the desolations of many generations. Amen. And it goes on. It goes on. That is a wonderful place to read. Amen. And study all the awesome blessings and promises that are coming from God. Amen. I'm going to read one other place in Verse 10, it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He's covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decked himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Amen. We've been talking about the covenant. Amen. Amen. The covenant that God established with his people that he established with Abraham. Now a covenant, especially in those times and to the Hebrew people, is different than our understanding of it now and our Western understanding. We're so legalized. We see everything as a legal agreement. It's our human nature. It's one of the issues that there was with the first covenant because our legal, legal mind says, okay, if this is the rule, 
This is the way around it. If this is the law, well, here's an exception. But as God establishes a covenant, the original meaning of it, the idea of it, and these were blood covenants that one tribe would take with another, one person with another. And what God was sowing there and showing us, the idea of the covenant was, I will sacrifice my legal rights. I will put them aside for the betterment of this union. Amen. I will do what I need to do, whether it's in my best interest or not, to do what's in the best interest of this agreement, of this covenant. In other words, you sacrifice yourself for that covenant. Now, when we look at the covenants God establishes, this is a good deal. Amen? The old covenant, as much trouble and the struggle as they had to keep it, was a good deal. God does everything. He says, I will bless you. I'll be your God. I'll be your people. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to rise you up. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to get you out of where you need. I'm your healer. I'm your savior. I'm your provider. I'm your all in all. Our part is just faith and obedience. Amen. A commitment to it. And we see in there it's talking a lot about the bride. Because there's the marriage covenant. Marriage was a big deal in the Word of God. It was a big deal in the establishing of the covenant. It's a big deal to God. The very name of it has in it the name of holiness in Hebrew. It's holy matrimony. It's a holy union. It is the only, only correct way for this union to be blessed and sanctified by God. Amen. A man and a woman established in holy matrimony that that union can be blessed by God. Anything that's outside of that or in disagreement with that is not what God meant to be right. Because he meant for that to be the right thing. It's the natural thing. And we can come up with our own legal modern version That two men can get married or two women can get married or you can marry your horse. I don't care what you put in legal writing. It doesn't change the word of God. Amen. And that's not out of meanness. God is God. That's the gospel. That's the word. That's where we start from. God is the most high, sovereign, holy God. He established it. That's it. Our job is not to try and find legal ways around it. And His grace and His mercy show us our place. When we try and get in His place, that's what Satan did. That's what Lucifer did. Amen? That's what we did in the garden when we disobeyed him. And we've been stuck with that way of thinking ever since. Amen? Because that tree was the knowledge of good and evil. That we're going to decide for ourselves 
how I live, what's okay, what's right, what's not right. Going to be self-justified. They're worse than me. So I'm all right. I'm not that bad. They did it. But the gospel, in the Celtic language, that is two words, it's God spell. If we go back before that, It's the word of God. It's the Torah and the prophets. When Jesus talked about the scriptures, he was talking about the Torah and the prophets. The Hebrew word for gospel is besora. It means message. It means good tidings. It means the truth. The Celtic word I was just telling you, God spell, where gospel comes from, actually is related to an understanding of that in the in the Greek is is evangelium, where evangelical came from. And in those words is the word angel, because angel is a message, and the word evangelical is the message carried by the messenger. But the word of God tells us to go and preach the word. Amen? To preach the gospel, which is the Messiah's gospel. Amen? Not a, denom not a denominational gospel. Not a modern theology, but what thus saith the Lord. Amen? What did Jesus preach? Amen? Amen? And he preached repent. And we have been all over repent lately, but it's a big deal. Because it means to turn from this to that. It means to leave this and come into covenant with. Jesus said, I shed my blood for the new covenant. And he did it all for us. He completed it all. Amen. He took our sin debt. He paid our price. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our comforter. He's our very God. He's the most high. He's the one who gave us the, the very life we have. Every provision comes from him. He gave us the free will and gives us the grace to look and see who he is brings us to that place to where we can have a contrite and broken heart that says my God my God forgive me I can't believe I ever lived that way take it all from me and we enter into covenant amen like holy matrimony this way of serving God is a way of holiness amen Hallelujah. It's not a way of have twos and haircuts. It's a way of love and devotion. He is preparing an army. He has set us to do the work of the kingdom. And he told us that was to feed people, to help people, to tell people the truth, to share our testimony of what it used to be like, what happened, what he did for us, and the life we have now, of the freedom we have, to share like Isaiah 61 when that happens to us, to share like in Luke we no longer are captives. We've been set free. And our job is faith and obedience. Amen. But this new covenant that we hear taught eliminates the law
doesn't eliminate the law. It did away with the ceremonial aspects. But it fulfilled the law. It completed it, amen. And he wrote it in our hearts. He put it inside us. And called us to a higher level than ever before. Amen. Think you don't have to live the Ten Commandments? Read the Word of God. Jesus specifically said, you've heard it taught not to murder, but I'm telling you, if you hate in your heart, you've already committed murder. Sounds like Ten Commandments and then some to me. Amen. Because he called us to a new level. A greater level. The word of God says a way more perfect. Because we see in Jeremiah 31, 31, he says, I'm going to write my laws on their heart. Amen. We're called out of our human trying to get around the law into his holiness of how can I please you? How can I serve you? God had an awesome and deep and complete love for the law he established. It was his word. Amen. He never in any sense said that he was undoing anything about the law. It says it won't pass away. Amen. But just like we read, that veil has been torn in two. Amen. We don't need a priest to go in. Amen. In the old covenant, you needed a priest to intercede on your behalf. He would go to the people and then go back to God. Go and, and intercede. God himself robed himself in flesh and became the Lamb of God and completed that sacrifice once and for all. Amen. He rose from the grave, took victory over sin and death and hell. And sent his spirit back to dwell inside us, amen. That that veil has been torn in two and his very presence can be inside us, amen. We can have his righteousness and his holiness in us, amen. Hallelujah. What we were not able to do by ourselves, amen. In our rebellious human selves, amen. You make a law, we're going to figure a way around it. We're going to rebel against it. Amen. Curfew is 10 o'clock. Here we come in, 10.04. Amen. But by the grace and mercy of God in this new life, amen, hallelujah, we come in at 5 till. As I want to please Him. Amen. Want to obey Him. Out of that love. Out of that marriage. Amen. Out of that covenant. This new covenant. Amen. That by His grace. We can realize who He is. And who we're not. Amen. That we can walk in this way of holiness. That this way of salvation, this gospel way, this good way, this way that he taught can be our way of life. We don't set out to see what we can get away with. We just long to live right. Amen. Want to do as he made us able to that because of that new birth because of him dwelling in us amen we can be dead to our human nature that loves sin and be alive to our spiritual nature that just loves him and, and praises and and gives glory to our father and let's praise him in the house amen he wants us to work but we're not saved by work amen you hear of people sometimes with obsessive compulsive disorders that wash their hands. They're never clean. Can't, can't get them clean. 
we can be guilty of that ourselves before God sometimes. Or we get into a self-righteous religious place that I did all these things, so I'm okay. Amen? It's because of that finished work of the cross that our hands are clean. Amen? When we repent and receive that, it's done. Amen? Let's give him glory in the house. It's because of our new nature that we live in this way of love, this way of holiness, trying to follow Him, not in what we can get away with. That when we fall short or make a mistake, the spirit that's in us is grieved, it convicts us, we're like, oh God, forgive me. It draws us to study the Word more and more and more. That we can be approved so that it can dwell in us, so that we can understand it just because of the love that's in us. We just, when you get the Holy Ghost and you get that word in front of you, you just can't get enough. You just want more and more and more. Amen. But God has called us to labor in the kingdom, to work for Him, to preach the word. To carry this message. Amen. There's times. We want to try and soften it. Make it easier. And the enemy. Is an expert at that right now. They are. Preaching the gospel of the world. Everywhere. That you don't need this. That. You can live however you want and shouldn't feel any shame. Go to a particular psychologist and they'll tell you you're okay. Shame and guilt are there for a reason. If you're sneaking around and got to hide to do it, your conscience already knows. Amen. And you can pass all the legal things you want. You can change society all you want. You can do whatever you want. You can be a part of that antichrist system coming into place because we see it day after day. But the word of God tells us, amen, the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is coming. Jesus is returning. And it's time for us to get ready and share the truth with the world. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not just a bunch of rules to follow. Like I said, it's things that we can be set free from. Stuff we don't have to do anymore. Amen? We follow Him out of joy and peace and love and devotion. That covenant Amen. is that place where we said, God, I'm willing to do whatever you would have me do. Amen? Praise God. He sets us free from religion. He sets us free from having to do stuff to try and please us. He's not this kind of father or parent that, that crushes you and, and nothing's ever good enough. Amen? He's the loving, wonderful Savior. Amen? That always wants more for you. Always raising us up. His discipline is, is wonderful and pleasant. He brings us farther into the kingdom where we need to go. Amen? This way of holiness. Amen? Is a way of relationship. Let's give Him glory in the house. Amen, amen, amen. Get, we get ready to close. I just want to read one other thing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. For the hope which is weighed up, laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye have heard before, in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, and doeth also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. For this cause, since the day we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Give him glory in the house. Amen, amen.
men and men. As musicians come, let's get ready to pray.